Salesforce, criteria-based sharing rules and guest user sharing rules. Welcome to another session as we dive deep into Salesforce security and sharing. Today, we're diving into um, Salesforce criteria-based sharing rules and guest user sharing rules. Today, we're going over sharing set 2A on Steve's 20 ways to share a record. Today is about criteria sharing rules. So as we mentioned in previous videos, the record level sharing and visibility is the mechanisms that control whether a record is visible or not to a user. This assumes that the user already has object level access, which are a separate set of controls. I've used analogies in other videos where getting into the building is authentication and authorization. Getting into a particular office suite is like getting object level access through profiles and permission sets. And getting access into specific files in a file cabinet is your record level visibility. And that's what we're here to talk about today. And we're diving into um, you know, the mechanisms to share a record. Some are configuration or code. The ones we're going over today are both configuration. These all use the, the primarily the share table um, for the criteria based sharing rules. And as we dive in, we're into set number 2A. Ways four and five to share a record, criteria-based sharing rules, where you select the criteria, determine the sharing level, select the target, whether it's a group or role or optionally subordinates. There's also a guest-based sharing rule to control the guest-based access for anonymous, unauthenticated users to either your sites or to your digital experiences, AKA communities. You, and you select the criteria, the sharing level, and the target guest user or experience profile. Going into the details for criteria-based sharing rules. A criteria-based sharing rule creates criteria that is based on the record values of the records being shared, not the record owners. The sharing criteria, the re now the values must be on the record itself. So you can use the record type, and then fields such as auto number, checkbox, date, date, time. Um, they have lookup relationships, but notice that they're only allowing you to access the user ID or the queue ID. So those are IDs. Um, then we'll be talking about the use of IDs and criteria rules a little later on. You can also use number, percent, phone, pick list, text, text area, URL, and note. Note that you can use the text area, which allows you to use larger fields. That's a powerful element. So you can create criteria-based sharing rules for uh, accounts, assets, campaigns, cases, contacts, leads, opportunities, work orders, and custom objects. This does not open up all of Salesforce standard objects, but it does grant you the power on your custom objects. So if we look at the screen for creating a rule, you're gonna define you know, the name and the description, and we're choosing the middle option, which is based on criteria. You can create a series of criterias, which have the field, the operator, and the target value. This is showing the screen in all and mode where any multiple criterias are anded, but you can select the ability to create your own and, or, and, or logic. Then you're gonna have step four, which is the target, who you're sharing with. And then you have the level of access for granting. So with the criteria, you can pick a field that must be on the record itself. And here are your operands from equals, not equals, contains is a powerful one. You even have includes and excludes and within. These are powerful ones that could allow you to, you know, create some unique criteria based sharing rules. With the targets, this is an important mechanism. You're choosing who to share with. So you could target a public group, a role, a role in internal subordinates. And if you've created a digital experience or community, you can do roles internal and portal subordinates. The subordinates is an, is an, is an interesting concept. You can see my little mini hierarchy in the lower right, where if you had a regional VP with a director reporting below, a manager reporting below, and an assistant manager reporting below, then if I had a target of sharing to the manager, then what would happen is only the manager would be granted access. And depending on if the hierarchy is chosen, the director and regional VP, 
but the assistant manager would not have access to the records. So the assistant manager would not be able to provide assistance to the manager. This would be a sharing where you wanted to keep it at a certain level and above. Now, if you did have a situation where you wanted to share with the manager and you wanted their support staff to be able to support them, like a team being able to work a set of records, then you would choose the target for the role and subordinates. That way you could target the manager, granting them access, and all of the people below them in the role hierarchy could also receive access. So this is a powerful mechanism. Decide whether you want to target the role or the role in subordinates. And we'll also talk about the use of going up into the hierarchy. Now, public groups can be a target of a criteria-based sharing role. Now, they're very powerful mechanisms because you could create a public group, all users in the West Coast, and then all users in the East Coast and all users in the Midwest. But then you could create a group which represents the entire US and put all three groups inside of it. So you can choose whether to share with East, West, Midwest, or all. And it, it creates a very strong now you, strong mechanism. You can also include a role and the hierarchy in, inside of a group. So you could target a group and include a role in hierarchy and a role and hierarchy and internal subordinates. And there's a checkbox which says grant access using the hierarchies. So when you target this group, any records share with users in this group are also shared with users higher in the role hierarchy. So you may have, um, have it structured so that by targeting a group of users, it can then send it upward in their hierarchy. So if you were going to that proverbial manager right here and targeting them, you'd also want their director and regional VP to get access. And you can do that by targeting them in a group and checking that box, grant access using the hierarchy. So public groups are very powerful mechanisms to include individual users, other groups, roles, roles and hierarchies, and even the, um, the portal and portal subordinates. All right. Now, this all affects internal users with your target being the groups, the roles, and the roles of subordinates. If you are, want to be able to share records with the guest user profile, now you get, if you created a Salesforce site, then you would get a guest user profile that represents what an unauthenticated anonymous user would be able to do, and you would grant that profile access using object level security. Now you may want to get them access to an object and control which records. This is where you can create a guest user sharing rule and you get to choose either A, in this org where I took the screenshot, I had a, a single public site, plus I had a digital experience with a called customer service site. So you can choose whether you're gonna grant it to a particular digital experience, AKA community, or to a particular site. You'll notice the caveat, this sharing rule grants access without login credentials, and they're just disclaiming that you might be revealing information, so you need to be careful utilizing this one. Notes, try to avoid hard-coded Salesforce IDs and sharing rules. There may be some situations where it's unavoidable, but you want to avoid it because you cannot deploy these through sandboxes to production because those IDs will be different. And this means that every time you deploy, you'll then need to modify the sharing rules. So try to avoid hard card Salesforce IDs. Be aware that criteria depend on fields that reside on the record and cannot use data through relationships. And that between the criteria sharing rules and the guest user sharing rules, you are limited to a total of 50. I use the example, if you were gonna create a criteria-based sharing rule based on a state and create a group, 50 groups, 50 rules, you would quickly max, max out the number of criteria rules on that object. So something over five or 10 of something, you need to realize you only have 50, so you'd have to find a different pattern. In this uh, test sandbox, I have an object called runways, which represents airport runways around the world. And as sysadmin, I can see all of these runways. Under the sharing settings, 
you can see that I have the runway as private. And if we go into this tab right here, which is a different user, this is Paul the Pilot. Paul the Pilot is the owner of one record. So if I go to OA Runways, all, he is only seeing one record because he is the owner. We're gonna go ahead and grant additional access to Paul the Pilot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this record right here. Let's take a particular runway. And we're gonna choose which one to grant access to. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at this airport identifier and we're gonna say if it starts with the letter Z, then we're gonna share it. So we'll create a group. We're gonna put Paul the Pilot in the group and we're gonna create a sharing rule to share the Z airport idents with that group. So from here, let's first go to public groups and we're gonna go create a new public group. We'll call it the airport Z group. So we'll call it the runway Z group. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna search for users. We're gonna put Paul the pilot in the runway Z group. So now we have a runway Z group. We're gonna go back to sharing. Go to the sharing settings. We're gonna scroll down, custom objects are down at the bottom. And here is, we're gonna create a new sharing group. We're gonna choose a criteria based, airport ident contains the value Z and we're gonna share it with a public group for the Runway Z group. We're gonna give him read-only access. So we're, we're gonna create this rule and we're gonna go the, run, the Z Runways. Z identified. And then we're gonna hit save. And what's happening now is Salesforce is gonna go into recalculation. And what's happening behind the scenes is share for, Salesforce is determining which records match the share, and then it's creating records in the share table to represent this. So I've refreshed the sharing setting, recalc is gone. I'm gonna come over to here and go all OA runways, all, and now you'll notice that all of these runways that start with a ident or have the Z in them aren't even OAZ. I could have done starts with, but I did contains. And you'll notice that if it contains a Z anywhere, then it is being shared in that group, which contains Paul the pilot. Now, what I wanna show you that if you go to Workbench you can choose an object and I've chosen OA runway share and I can run a query and see that there are 46,000 share records. So I can actually see those shares inside of here, which are sharing these records with different users. But the powerful way to see is now Paul the pilot can now see these records. And it's also shared because if I checked the box that it's also sharing upwards. So there were the share records. Let's actually take a look at those share records. Right here. So that's the uh, runway. If the runway airport ident contains Z, then share with the runway group. And we saw with the public runway group that Paul's in it. So this was a successful sharing using a criteria-based sharing rule with Paul the Pilot based on the, the criteria-based sharing rule to a group. So that's a good example of taking a look at a particular record, building a criteria, even if it's something as arbitrary as contains letter Z, having a target, which would be that group, putting who you either individual users or whoever you want designated, 
and then saving, and then Salesforce will perform those calculations and is actually sticking those records in that share table to represent those sharings. A um, lot of power, but remember you're limited to 50 and remember you're limited to criteria on the record itself. And you, if you don't have the exact criteria you need there, you might need to populate that, create a new custom field and populate and maintain it with an automation. Now, if you need to share a record based on something with the person you're sharing with, then that would be a different rule. And we'll be talking about those in subsequent videos. Hope this was helpful. Thank you for joining with Cool Criteria. Come back again, same bad time, same bad channel. Subscribe, Steve Tech Arc. Oh, I come to www.stevetecharc.com and have a great day. Thank you.